Hello and welcome to the IPATH webinar focusing on our 2020 rental market reports. My name is Peter Douglas and I'm the CEO of IPATH. Firstly, I'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, our webinar series sponsors, um, and they are Hinoa, MCS, Jeshlift, Green Power Design, Astri Company Limited, and Sunwood Equipment Group. Thank you very much for your support, guys. So, the rental market reports. Uh, we normally produce these reports and launch them in conjunction with our annual summit, which was supposed to be in April this year. With the pandemic in mind, we had to push our summit back initially to October, and now from October back to March 2021. At the point where we moved it back to next year, we did have an internal discussion as to whether we should indeed do the rental reports this year, especially with the difficulty um, in forecasting to the end of 2020, let alone what will happen next year. We reached out to members to get their views and overwhelmingly our members said this year, more than any other year in their history, they needed more information. They needed some insight. They needed some insight to give them the ability to, to forecast, to set strategy, to budget, to make investment decisions. And our manufacturing members, you know, really needed some insight as to where the market growth was going to come from, areas that they would indeed like to focus on. So we've produced the reports or we're finalising the reports um, now. We've been producing these award-winning reports since 2008. Um, so that brings data together with trends on the rental markets way back from 2008 right up to the present day. The reports include an estimate of the size of the mute rental fleet worldwide with a breakdown by region and machine type. They outline key facts and figures such as fleet size, utilisation rates and retention periods globally. They provide details analysis and comparison of European and North American markets. A specific report on North America, which incorporates the USA and Canada. A special focus on China, which continues to defy all market analytics and every other market in the world. And specific reports on France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, uh, the Nordic region covering Denmark, Finland, Norway and Sweden, Spain and the United Kingdom. And the report is available in the following formats. You can buy the global report and all countries. You can buy the global report plus one country, or you can buy specific individual country reports. Now, the reports are not quite finished. We wanted to give ourselves as much time and leave it as late as possible to ensure that all the latest thinking had gone into the final report. So it will be ready by the end of October, um, but we will be putting up a slide later on in this presentation with a link to the online order form. So what are you going to hear about today? In a couple of minutes, I'm going to hand over to Murray Pollock. Delighted to have Murray giving you an, a worldwide industry overview. Murray, uh, with his unique insight, um, works globally on behalf of KHL. So I'm really looking forward to listening to that. And then you will hear from really the architects of the report, Ducker Frontier, Audrey Caron and Anne Mion, both directors at Ducker Frontier, will run you through the key rental data and some insights from this year's report. They will also answer any questions that came up um, from the registration process. As this webinar is being pre-recorded, there is no live Q&A functionality. But if you do have any questions, please send us an email um, to info at ipath.org and we will get back to you with the answers. And then finally, um, we have some, some of our members who value these reports, letting you guys know what they use them for, how they find them really useful. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Murray. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Murray Pollock, I'm Managing Editor of International Rental News Magazine. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, IPA for the opportunity to say a few words today um, and also compliment the association and Ducker for their work in compiling credible statistics for the, uh, for the power access market. Um, 
I think one of the important things to remember is that the reports are using a consistent methodology across many different markets. And it's that consistency of approach, uh, something that nobody else is doing in the access sector, uh, which brings real value to the data. IPAF has, has asked me to give a, a quick summary of what's happening uh, around, the war, around the world. Um, uh, so I'll try and do that in the next 10 minutes. Um, I think it's fair to say it's easier uh, to paint a picture of how difficult the last six months has been um, than it is to provide a positive vision for the coming year. Um, still, I'll, I'll do my best to be positive. Um, you can't really overstate the impact of the pandemic especially because we still don't know how long it will last and what the ultimate consequences will be. Not even Ducker can predict that. And of course, one of the fundamental things about the pandemic is how it has left the construction sector and the aerial platform industry completely at, at the mercy of government policies on lockdown measures, policies which have varied enormously around the world. That meant that the UK rental sector, for example, was effectively closed when all but essential construction work was halted. And I think France, Italy and Spain were almost as badly hit. The European Rental Association estimates that as a result, the UK rental sector shrank by around 40% in the second quarter of the year. It's hard to imagine that ever happening again or, or, or before. And that contrasts with what happened in countries like Germany, the Netherlands and some Scandinavian markets, where governments uh, worked with uh, construction associations and unions to maintain construction activity to a far greater degree. In these markets, the drops were far less, around about 10%. We're talking about the second quarter of the, of the year. Just to give one example, the Rami rent business, now owned by Loxam, um, focused on the Scandinavian market. For the three months to the 30th of June, difficult period, in the, in, in the, right in the midst of the pandemic, there, there was a 9% de decline in revenues, and that compared to a 33% decline in Loxam's French business. The ERA uh, has also produced some forecasts for 2021, although these have to be treated with some caution for obvious reasons. The association is for forecasting that only Germany will see growth that will exceed the reduction this year. Elsewhere, there will be bounce back, so 8.4% growth in France next year's forecast, 4.6% in the UK, 5.2% in, in, in Spain. These are positive figures, but lower than the decreases estimated for this year. That means if the figures are correct or close to correct, several of the major markets in, uh, in Europe will be smaller next year than they were in 2019, Germany being the only exception. Looking at Asia, there's also a mixed picture. Australia's construction sector tried hard to stay open through the pandemic with some success, and its reliance on the natural resources sector, mines, etc., which stayed open, it was another benefit to rental. Asia's access industry is dominated by China, of course, and while it was hit hard at the beginning of the year with supply chains disrupting uh, the supply of engines and components, it has recovered quickly. Um, in fact, the Chinese government uh, stimulus measures, similar to what they did after the financial crisis 10 years ago, will actually lead to a forecast increase in sales of all construction equipment this year of as much as 14%, according to off-highway research. And that contrasts with a 27% reduction in the rest of the world. The access industry, as we know, has its own dynamic. Um, China's access business has taken off in the last seven or eight years, and their rental fleet is now in the, the range of 110 to 150,000 units. I think that's about right, um, which makes it one of the largest access rental markets in the world. Uh, and there are forecasts that the fleet will exceed half a million units within five years, which will make it a market approaching this, the size of Europe or North America. It took those areas 40 or 50 years to reach that scale, China could do it in less than 15. That has led to, to growing pains, um, understandably, with reports of rental prices under severe pressure and lower levels of sales this year. My understanding is that a lot of Chinese rental companies, with the exception of a few major players, those with the deepest financial pockets, are being much more conscious on fleet investment, cautious on fleet investment now. Even so, the fact that China represents an existing, an enormous existing and potential market 
and the explosion of the rental concept has given Chinese OEMs a boost. Um, it would also suggest that it will give those manufacturers a, rel a relative advantage over those who are more reliant on faltering uh, Western markets. I think the fairly obvious message would be that Chinese manufacturers who are already making strategic investments in European and US manufacturers are likely to play a bigger role going forward internationally. What about North America, the largest access market in the world with the largest rental companies? Um, the results from United Rentals and HNE, two of the largest publicly listed companies, uh, indicate second quarter revenues down 15, 16%, while United, uh, sorry, Sunbelt Rentals for a slightly later period reported a 7% reduction. United's guidance for the full year sees revenues down by between 10 and 14%. So the pandemic has had a significant impact on the access rental business uh, and on CapEx expectations. The best source of data on the general equipment rent rental market in North America is the American Rental Association, the ARA. The organization um, shared its latest thinking with me. I'm grateful to it for doing that, uh, which is that the forecast for construction industrial rental revenues this year is down about 15% from the 2019 high of 39 billion. That means it would reduce to uh, less to around 33.5 billion, significant fall. The ERA does say that with a better performance, economic performance in the, in the third quarter, the forecast could improve. Just as significantly though, the ERA is saying that it does not believe revenues will exceed 2019 levels until 2023, when it's forecasting um, construction and industrial revenues to, to get back to $39.2 billion. If the ERA and, uh, and, and ARA paint a rather bleak picture just in numbers, uh, then there are other factors which make the consequences or judging the consequences of the pandemic a bit more difficult. Um, for one thing, there isn't always a straightforward uh, picture of uh, rental activity simply matching GDP declines. You've got to factor in the, the maturity of the sector, the structure of the market itself, and other opportunities that may exist to, to, to gain new customers. This is a point that Marco Prosperi, director of Italy's Rental and Distributors Association, Asodimi Asunolo, uh, recently made to IRN. He said Italian rental companies were recovering um, from the, quickly from the lockdown and that the large number of small and medium-sized rental companies in the country had made it possible for them to quickly adapt to new working conditions and that many had been able to continue working. You might contrast that with the larger national and multinational companies who have been forced to close depots and, and lay off or furlough staff. Uh, just to give you one anecdotal example, I visited a, a, a single location rental business in the UK a month ago um, before lockdown measures uh, intensified again. And I was struck by their positive attitude. Um, for them, being a small independent company gave them advantages, close links to local customers, local knowledge of, uh, of contracts and business, and also the ability to adapt to working practices very quickly. Only one location, smaller number of staff. In practice, it meant that they were very quickly able to say yes to customers in a way that possibly some of their larger competitors found it more difficult. All of these things have helped the company to actually increase its uh, forecast for revenues this year, which is extraordinary when you think about it. That may be an exceptional case, but it indicates that the, the impact of the pandemic is not universally felt across every company uh, in every country. Marco Prosperi's view also points to a wider one about rentals' role in reducing risk. There has long been a view that recessions can provide a boost to rental because it offers contractors and other equipment users with a lower risk way of acquiring equipment. Um, so the pandemic may well put the spotlight on the role that rental can play. Um, of course, we know that access is already a very high rental, highly rented product, and the, the scope for increased penetration is, is lower than in other products. But if you have a, a more of a focus on the general rental market, that will benefit access. The other consequences have been the way that the industry has been forced to adapt new ways of, of working, some of which are likely to uh, survive the end of the pandemic. I'm thinking of things as diverse as remote learning or training, something that IPAP is, is pioneering in the access sector. 
and also digital rental processes. Um, I think a rather extreme example of, of the digital focus has arisen over the past week with the announcement from HSS Hire, one of the most famous UK rental businesses, that the pandemic will accelerate its digitization plan, with one result being the closure of more than 125 stores around half of its network. It found that it was generating close to 90% of its revenues, with 145 of its locations closed. Unfortunately, of course, that also means a lot of lost jobs. And there are physical processes that also may stay beyond the, the health crisis, such as a new focus on drive-by facilities for customers to easily pick up equipment. This may have long-term impact or influence on the way that rental locations are, are located and, and designed. And just to come to a kind of conclusion, I think the pandemic has also reminded us of the importance of key workers in our lives and health services, delivery drivers, the, the logistics industry of which the rental industry is a part. And there are many people and businesses in our industries who have contributed towards the collective efforts to combat the pandemic. I'm thinking just to give one poignant example of the, of the rewild scissor lift being used to let uh, families meet their quarantined uh, parents. But I think there have been countless other examples of generosity and community spirit. Um, so I think the industry, access and rental industries can be proud of their response to the pandemic. So that's um, how I'd like to end today. Um, I hope this has been a, a useful overview, a brief overview. And again, I thank uh, IPAF for the opportunity. I, I hope you enjoy the rest of the event today. And thank you and good day. Hi, I'm Karin Nars. I'm the Managing Director of Dino Lift. We are a manufacturer of Dino Mupes and we are based in Finland. And I want to share with you why we trust the IPAF rental market report. This is a crystal ball and in my experience it isn't helpful when planning and budgeting for next year. I have tried, it doesn't give any answers, uh, so I have given up on it. Instead, I trust the IPAF rental market reports. We have been buying the reports for as long as they have been produced. They give us valuable uh, information uh, to, to plan where to focus our sales efforts. Um, and they also help us see how we are performing in different regions in comparison with the development in those regions. It also, of course, gives us valuable insights for our production planning, for our sourcing planning, uh, for us to, to plan our capacity for, for next years, for the, for the coming years. Um, so my advice to you is don't trust the crystal ball. It isn't accurate. It doesn't, doesn't give you the answers that you need. Uh, to get accurate and valuable insights for your budgeting, for your planning, for your for forecasting, go and get the IPAF rental market reports. They are so worth it. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar. As every year, Dakar is preparing the IPAF new parental market report, which looks at the evolution of main market indicators in various regions, Europe, the US, and China. I am Anne Mion, director at Dakar, and will present the main findings with Audrey Courant, managing director at Dakar. These estimates and market vision that we are showing here today have been developed using a methodology consisting in triangulating data coming from interviews with market players, such as new rental companies, manufacturers, and other market experts, as well as secondary information related to construction or rental statistics and other macroeconomic indicators. For each region, 
we suggest to review 2019 market situation before moving to the key question that everyone has. How did COVID-19 impact the new rental market in 2020? And what to expect for the coming years? The IPAF reports will contain more elements as well as scenario regarding key indicators future evolution. Before starting, Docker and IPAF would like to thank all companies who kindly participated to the project preparation and estimate development. Let's get started with an overview of the European market. After a strong market increase in 2018, the European new rental market experienced a year of moderate growth in 2019, with a 4% revenue growth reported, driven mainly by fleet expansion, in addition to slight improvement of rental rates. In 2019, the overall new rental revenue for the 10 countries under study went close to 3 billion euros, while fleet size reached a new unprecedented level at 308,000 units, allowed by strong investment from new rental companies. The 10 countries under study can be classified into three different categories, depending on their revenue growth celerity in 2019. First category shows the countries which experienced accelerated growth in 2019. Second category shows countries that reported moderate growth, while the third category presents flat growth countries. The first dynamic category comprises of half of the countries within Europe, France, Germany, the Netherlands, Italy, and Spain. For all these countries, a minimum new rental revenue growth of 5% was reported in 2019, driven mainly by fleet expansion in order to comply with growing demand from a variety of end sectors, in addition to a slight rental rate increase. Two Nordic countries stand within the intermediary or moderate growth category, Denmark and Norway. Market situation remained positive in both countries, and the new rental revenue growth range of 2 to 3% was reported, driven by a mix of slight fleet growth and rate increase. At last, three countries stood within the rather flat revenue category in 2019. Sweden, Finland, and more specifically the UK, had a relatively stable new rental revenue, each due to specific reasons. While in Sweden, a contraction of construction market was at the origin of slower growth outlooks, in Finland, the market was reported to become saturated, leading to rather flat indicators, such as stable demand and only light feed growth. The UK market situation was specific, as market players were still lacking a clear vision of when and how the UK would exit from European Union, in order to understand which impact on their activity to expect and how to plan their strategies accordingly. The high level of uncertainty led to a halt in market development and flat outlooks. At that time, in 2019, two main factors were driving some uncertainty in regards to future years. As already discussed, the first one was Brexit and the absence of an exit plan or deal. The second one was linked to the overall trade war between China and the US, starting to impact the exports of European countries like Germany, for instance. But let's talk now about how and to which extent COVID-19 disrupted the 10 European markets under study. A number of articles and statistics, but also our experience with clients, peers and colleagues in different countries, highlight that although the situation impacted all markets negatively, the level of impact differs depending on lockdown measures and actual duration of lockdown periods, in addition to local government stimulus to maintain construction activities or at least favor a quick recovery. Tucker estimates that the total European new rental market under study will experience a revenue drop close to 10% in 2020, with mixed companies' reactions consisting in either reducing fleet to preserve utilization rates or maintain competitiveness as much as possible by adjusting rates. 
The total European mu parental sheet size is likely to shrink in 2020 and even more in 2021, while the utilization rate lost at least seven points and overall rental rate decrease. On that element, several mu parental companies reported compensating on reduced rental rates by promoting services. Investments have been cut off and only limited amounts will be maintained for some fleet renewal efforts. In his video extract, Murray Pollock split the European countries into two different categories, which we can only agree with based on latest indicators that Ducker collected. Most imparted, impacted markets include the UK, then France, Spain, and Italy. It's quite hard to remain positive when assessing the UK new parental situation. While Brexit has increased companies' fragility, the sudden stop of construction activities and full lockdown measures led to a complete market collapse during Q2. At some point, new parental revenue went down by 50%, from a year-on-year -year performance comparison standpoint. Main reactions consisted in reducing fleet size by discarding older equipment in order to preserve utilization rates as much as possible. It is estimated that the UK mu parental fleet size decreases by approximately 3% in 2020. The other three most impacted markets, France, Spain and Italy, had a slightly different reaction. They indeed saw their utilization rate drop in Q2, representing an overall decrease of at least seven points for 2020 in total. Companies have focused on preserving cash, limiting their investment for next year, and maintaining fleet size, hoping to get back to pre-COVID activity levels later in 2021 or 2022 at the latest, considering that some positive dynamics were pre-existing to COVID in these markets. Overall, 2020 mu parental revenue is expected to drop by around 10% in these three countries as demand slowed down and companies slightly reduce their rental rates. Other countries within our scope of study, Germany, the Netherlands and most of Nordic countries, managed to maintain a relatively satisfactory level of activity and experienced more moderate drop of their 2020 new parental revenue than other countries. Nevertheless, companies intend to limit as much as possible investment in new equipment purchase and could potentially reduce their fleet size slightly as a way to cope with continuous lower demand. When thinking about 2021, it's hard to provide detailed figures as several factors remain uncertain. For instance, the extent of a second COVID wave and its impact on various sectors' dynamism are still unclear. So is the construction activity evolution, as a large project pipeline may dry up in 2021. Indicators such as utilization rates are not expected to go back to previous levels before several months. Some markets, such as Germany, seem more likely to take off again soon, during Q1 or Q2 next year. But for others, efforts in 2021 will be focused mainly on stabilizing a still precarious situation or getting back on a slow road to growth. In all cases, 2019 levels are not expected to be reached again before a few years. Let's now look at um, some results for the United States of America. Similarly, when reviewing main market indicators for the US, we can assess that 2019 was another good year for the MUP rental market. Overall, MUP rental revenue grew by an another 3 to 4% and went beyond $11 billion in 2019. That year, new rental companies continued to both expand and renew fleet. Utilization was maintained at a high level, around 70%, after increasing for several years, as fleet expansion could not absorb all the growing demand. Rental rates tended to stagnate or only slightly grow 
under fierce competitive pressure happening in the market. Regarding the MUP rental fleet, Caesars hold the largest share, accounting for more than half of the total MUP fleet. Both Caesars and Booms represent almost 95% of equipment categories within MUP rental fleets. MUP rental activity in the US is predominantly oriented towards construction and sector, which accounted in 2019 for 70% of new rental end applications. Non-construction applications, such as facility management, for instance, have gained share over time, but remain less important than the construction one. After disclosing this overall positive snapshot of 2019 new rental market for the US, it is important to mention that 2019 was also the year where first signs of caution appeared regarding future market development. Main indicators growth started to slow down, especially the new rental revenue and fleet size. Two main factors drove this cautious attitude. First of all, companies anticipated a potential recession starting in 2020 after almost nine years of continuous growth. In addition, they prepared for the uncertainty of the 2020 elections. Mew rental companies confirmed this cautious attitude as the level of investment started to decrease after four years of continuous growth. Although the first three months of 2020 started on a positive note in the US with comparable results to previous year, the COVID crisis impacted the market drastically during Q2 of 2020. Ducker estimates that new rental revenue decrease is likely to reach minus 9% in 2020. The peak of crisis happened in April and May and translated into a sudden fall of several indicators. Both utilization and rental rates have deteriorated impacting the new rental revenue. Rental companies' immediate reaction consisted in, first, reducing fleet size in order to protect relatively satisfactory utilization rates, and secondly, adjust future acquisition plans by significantly reducing the expected amount of investment. Although the situation is improving in Q3 and expected to be better in Q4, this will not be enough to compensate for the losses and heavy market disruption that happened in Q2. When considering what 2021 will look like, two main factors are likely to impact the celerity of new rental market recovery. The first one is linked to when a vaccine against COVID will be available. The second one is linked to the outcome of the presidential election and market's reaction to it. At the time of this webinar, the level of uncertainty regarding elections remains high. In parallel to assessing COVID impact on the market, Durker was able to confirm some long-term tra long trends regarding equipment. Typically, the penetration of green power sources within new rental fleet, especially electric, continued to increase. More than 90% of scissors are now electric within the American MUP rental fleets. On the other end, booms remain predominantly driven by internal combustion engines, but the share of electric power sources keeps increasing and now represents more than 30% of total booms fleet. Let's terminate our presentation with a focus on China. Although impacted earlier than other countries by COVID, the Chinese new rental markets stand out as driving Asia's unrivaled market development. Back in 2019, this market experienced its strongest revenue growth over the previous five years, with a total rental market value going beyond $850 million. Rental players kept expanding fleet in order to comply with growing demand, while a massive number of new players entered the market. It is reported that the number of new rental companies went from 800 in 2018 
to more than 1,400 in 2019. Two main impacts of such market development have been reported. First of all, the competitive pressure became more intense, forcing rental companies to reduce rental rates further. Some minus 15% rate decreases have been reported. The strong fleet growth due to both new players' addition and existing players' fleet expansion allowed for a more sustainable utilization rate, ranging between 70 and 75%, while it previously was closer to 80%. COVID-19 impacted the Chinese market, although at a different level than other regions under study. Stimulus spending from the government, coupled with strong growth dynamics, led to temporary slowing down, but still positive, growth figures in 2020. Local manufacturers reported record sales and large new rental players with strong cash flow capabilities consolidated their leading positions. On the contrary, smaller companies adopted a more cautious attitude regarding future investment. In order to maintain attractiveness, new rental companies reduced rental rates further by double-digit figures, especially for the most common equipment categories. Considering the strong competition and future expected market consolidation, it is hard to say whether the low rental rates will be just a transitional effect or will last on the long term. In addition to market data, ahead of the webinar, uh, you shared with us questions about opportunities or disruptions in the post-pandemic market. The key element that stands out is that the COVID situation acted as an accelerator for the rollout of pre-existing digital strategies within new rental companies. A wide range of initiatives have been reported to that extent, from a more general usage of telematics, for remote control and follow-up, to the implementation of artificial intelligence, enhancing rental experience, and allowing customers to preview their machine at 360 degree when selecting equipment remotely. New rental companies try to save on cash, but digitalization initiatives are not the area where major cuts happen. We hope that this short presentation answered the question you had. More elements will be available in the IPAF MUP rental reports that will be released end of October. Thank you. My guess is that within any business, large or small, the management team in some way tracks both financial and operational performance. This typically entails comparing current performance against the budget or against another period of time, so last month or the same time last year. But even in a small to medium-sized business such as Horizon Platforms, this doesn't quite offer the full picture. We want to know how our business compares to others in the market we compete against, especially thinking about pricing and levels of fleet utilisation. We therefore seek to acquire data captured from outside our business to offer a fuller picture. This allows us to make better investment decisions and helps us be much more targeted with our sales and operational strategies and tactics. The IPAF annual market report, in my opinion, is the most robust source of powered access specific market information and hence we continue to invest year on year. For a company like Rewell is vital to have the right uh, information about the trends of the market. We are present in 16 countries and uh, the report contains information about the majority of the countries. Additionally, I think that it's very important to have reliable sources of information to make the right strategic decisions. I think the report contains really valuable information. For me, the most important are the European market knowledge, the American market, the benchmark between the both uh, areas, uh, inside information per country, like the fleet mix insights, the paid back periods, the time youth, of course, 
the price development and the market trends and the drivers in the countries. The report can be very supportive for the following business decisions. To compare the performance in one country versus the market, to allocate the capex per country, and also to look for business opportunities in your existing or in uh, new markets. The IPATH report is quite unique and I will recommend it basically for two reasons. One is that it provides deep information of many countries and the second one is that in our industry there is not a lot of reliable sources of information and the IPATH report that is based on many interviews provides direct information of coming from people that are experts in the market. Hi, I hope you found that really useful. I would just like to finally thank our sponsors once again, our webinar series sponsors, Inoa, MCS, Jesslift, Green Power Design, Astri Company Limited, and Sunward Equipment Group. Thank you very much for your support, guys. It's much appreciated. I would also like to thank our speakers today, Murray Pollock from KHL, Audrey Caron, and Anne Mayon from Ducker Frontier. And finally, um, our members who did those testimonial videos. Thank you, Karen Nars from Dino Lift Finland, Ben Hurst from Horizon Platforms UK, and Pedro Torres from Rewall Europe. Thank you very much, guys. As I said earlier, if you have any questions that have not been answered today on what you've heard, um, please send us an email, info at ipath.org. And if you would like to order the reports, you can go online and order them at ipath.org forward slash reports. Thank you very much for your time.